This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is all on plate tectonics. It is a review guide, a means to study for a test on this subject. And we're going to discuss the different elements, components, and how they uh, mesh together and how we review for an upcoming test on plate tectonics. So first, looking at the Earth's interior and looking at the uh, main principal layers, the crust, lithosphere, and asthenosphere. Now, this part is the upper mantle, and we can also add in that the surface of the Earth is right there, and we can also tie in that this is called a tectonic plate, and that also this is a um, plastic region and the fact that it has convection cones and this is the mechanism to which moves the above plate we can also add in the force of gravity which will always be consistent and play a part especially with uh, various uh, plate boundaries so going back to our plate our plate um, comes in basically the uh, the crust is very um, Thin, but is divided into two parts. You have the ocean crust, which is here. So this is our crust in general, but the ocean crust or oceanic crust is very thin and it can be between five to seven miles in average thickness. And we have the continental crust, which is right here. And this is thicker and it can be anything around 25 to 35 miles thick. And it can extend down to roughly 70 miles, perhaps under large mountain ranges. And the lithosphere is this consistent layer of uh, ultramafic rock, igneous, metamorphic, uh, that is the base of the crust. And if you want to add in also the moho, which would be here, which would separate the, the solid layer crust to the uh, weak plastic asthenosphere. You can also add the composition of the oceanic crust and the continental crust. And oceanic is primarily basalt with some gabbro at the bottom, and continental is primarily granite. And you must might also hear the word granitic. And you might have a small amount of andesitic rock as well. And these are all both of these are igneous. So IG for igneous. Basalt is our extrusive igneous that's made from lava, cool on the surface, and our granite is our classic intrusive igneous rock formed from cooling magma, slowly with large crystals and lots of uh, different mixture of minerals. So plate tectonics as a scientific theory was developed really in the 1960s through to the early 70s. And this came about through a joining of information from various scientists, very dis various discoveries, various initiatives and uh, developments in the scientific world. And it really is a um, all-encompassing umbrella theory that uh, gives light to explain how volcanoes form and behave and erupt um, earthquakes and why they're there and, and uh, certain depths. Also look at the uh, production of ocean trenches and looking at the creation and destruction of oceanic crust or oceanic plate. The cycling of material in addition to obviously the rock cycle and the various other biogeochemical cycles. And it gives light to how the Earth, the Earth's surface, is broken into pieces. Pieces of rock that are the thin layer in which we live on and exist on. And these plates, these tectonic plates, are always moving because of convection currents in the asthenosphere. Now, when the plates meet, so when you have these broken pieces, you're gonna have pieces that are large and are of different sizes. So the large ones are called major plates, based on the area of the plate. And a medium-sized one or a small one um, is called a minor plate. And there's also a couple that are very, very small and uh, like very small. And these are called micro. All right, so where these plates meet is called a boundary. A boundary. Now, another word you can use is margin, but that's usually like the area around the boundary. The boundary is where two plates meet. And there are different types of boundaries. 
based on the movement. The movement of the plate, which again is uh, initiated and um, produced by the convection currents in the asthenosphere. And the types are, there is divergent, there is convergent, and there is, the third one is transform. So with these types, you're looking at uh, breaking down the word and looking at how to describe these. So in terms of the movement, the plates are going away from each other. And this is pretty obvious. It's where the plates are constructed. So we call this a constructive plate boundary. And the plates are, well, the plates, the rock, the basalt is formed. Now, convergent. They are opposite. They are moving towards each other. So they're going towards, they're going to collide. And this is called a destructive plate boundary. This is where the plates are um, melted and recycled. And then transform, that's where there's neither destruction or construction. They kind of slide past each other. And this is called a conservative plate boundary. So the features of the divergent, you have a mid-ocean ridge found by Hess in 1962 to 1963 using sonar and you have the upwelling of magma through convection currents through the ridge causing lava to go on the, uh, through the ridge causing the basalt to be formed and the age and the paleo were ways to prove the ocean floor is moving and this was sea floor spreading was the theory that Wegener could not prove Convergent, now that comes in three types. So convergent comes in three types. Three types based on the two plate, uh, the two crust differences. So you have the ocean plate and the continental plate. So we have ocean that collides with continental. That's the classic. You have continental smashing against continental. You have ocean smashing against ocean. So these three variations all have different features. The transform, again, uh, you're going to have earthquakes primarily here. You're going to have the friction. And the most famous one we can look at is the San Andreas Fault line or fault system in California in the U.S. So we discussed the conversion plate boundary and the three types. We must discuss isostasy, which is the uh, science of buoyancy, and whether something will float or sink based on the density. Now, in general, there is an average density for ocean, oceanic plate, and a general density for continental plate. So oceanic density is basalt, which is around 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed. And continental, uh, we're looking at the granite or granitic rock, which is around 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, based on the 3 versus 2.7, 3 is obviously a higher number, therefore it's uh, denser than the continental crust uh, or plate. So the denser plate, when it co collides and converges with the other plate that's less dense, it's going to sink. And the other one that's less dense will be more likely to float, especially over the asthenosphere, which is like a massive, huge, hot jello mold of high density. So what are the features in ocean to ocean? Well, one's going to be the one that is further away from the ridge and is older is generally going to be thicker and denser. So one is going to subduct under the other. And when you have subduction, you get a small trench being formed. Here's my ocean. And you get the melting and you get little volcanoes and you get what's called an island, or a volcanic island um, chain or an arc. So subduction is based on density. And the subduction is going to cause accretional wedges right here. It's going to cause uh, various changes of metamorphism. And it's going to change or cause melting and uh, volcanoes to form at a certain distance away from that um, trench, which is right here, the trench. Ocean to continental, well, you've got a clear difference in density. So the ocean plate is denser. It's going to subduct under the continental plate, which is a lot thicker. And you're going to have the creation of a trench going to have melting right here. It's going to come up and form volcanoes on the coastline of the continent. And it's going to be a, a volcanic chain. And you're going to have a line. And the uh, well, the example for this would be the uh, northwest of the USA with the one Fuca plate uh, subducting under the North American plate. With ocean to ocean, 
The classic one would be the, the Caribbean or the Caribbean with the little islands or the archipelagos uh, that create like the Philippines. And then with continent to continent, you have a similar or the same density crashing in. So you have these larger, thicker plates. And what we're gonna have is just the only way to go because the asthenosphere, here's my plate, crust of the sphere. The asthenosphere is uh, denser. You're gonna have a little bit of subduction maybe, but the majority of the rock is gonna go upwards and form these very large fold mountains. And the best example is the Himalayas. You can also mention could be a little small amount of magma, obviously lots of metamorphic rock, and that granite. It's going to metamorphosize in different uh, levels of or grades of metamorphic rock, like schist and phyllite and, and gneiss and even mignotite in uh, certain cases. We have these massive fold mountains created because the rock has to go somewhere and it goes up to form these massive, huge, beautiful mountains. Now, in terms of earthquakes, earthquakes exist in all of these boundaries, in every situation, every scenario, every environment, because you've got rock uh, moving against rock. Even with divergent, you have uh, earthquakes, and that's shown around the world with the uh, location of earthquakes, and they align pretty much around all the boundaries. So you have earthquakes of certain depths and certain intensities and magnitudes, but earthquakes are pretty consistent around the entire um, uh, plate boundaries and tectonics. And a good one example is the Pacific Ring of Fire, which has mostly ocean to continental convergence. It has some ocean to ocean convergence with the Philippine plate, uh, but this one is just, um, so these two are combined with the Ring of Fire and is the most extensive line of earthquakes and volcanoes on the planet. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.